Right now, there's an effort underway to transform the way Americans conduct elections. And as we move forward deep into the 2024 campaign, you're going to be hearing a lot more about it, maybe even voting on it in November. It has to do with something called ranked choice voting, a confusing alternative to the system most of us are familiar with, where the candidate with the most votes wins. There's bipartisan support for the change and bipartisan opposition. Today, we set out to find who's pushing ranked choice voting and who would benefit the most. Helping us navigate the ranked choice voting debate, Deb Otis of Fair Vote, an election reform group that tends to be thought of as left leaning and a major driver behind the ranked choice voting movement, and Scott Gans, who's against it. He's with the American Enterprise Institute, which is thought of as conservative. Ranked choice voting is a better way to vote. It gives voters the option to rank the candidates on their ballot. It gives voters more power, and it promotes majority winners in our elections, something we're not doing a good job of right now. And how would you describe it? The place where we disagree is whether it supports majority outcomes. So it supports the majority outcomes of the last two candidates, but it doesn't always support the majority outcome among all the candidates. And at least recent history has shown that in the presence of certain types of electorates, candidates that have true majority support don't actually get selected. Both sides agree ranked choice voting is a kind of instant runoff when no candidate has more than 50 percent of the vote. Here's how it works. In an election with more than two candidates, voters have the chance to rank the candidates from first to last on a voting form that looks like a multiple choice answer sheet. If the winner doesn't get more than half of the first place votes, ranked choice kicks in. The candidate in last place is knocked out. His votes get transferred to each of his voters' second choice. That keeps going until one person gets more than 50 percent. Right now, big money is behind ranked choice voting as a way to transform the American election system. But the idea has been around for a long time. Ashtabula, Ohio is said to have been first to adopt ranked choice voting in 1915 for city council elections. In 1941, Cambridge, Massachusetts began using ranked choice voting. San Francisco started in 2004. Today, some degree of ranked choice voting is used in at least three counties, several dozen cities, including New York, and two states, Alaska and Maine. What would you say about the history and why it seems to be more front and center the past 10 years or so, I think, maybe? than before. We have a long history in this country of wanting majority winners. Uh, we have a number of states that hold two round runoffs in order to get a majority winner and even more cities that do that for offices like mayor. Ranked choice voting aims to do the same thing without making voters show up and vote a second time a few weeks later. And so we see impacts like uh, increased positive issues focused campaigning and less mudslinging. Uh, we see winners with broader support among their constituents. And the more we are seeing these outcomes in practice, more cities and more states are choosing to opt in. What would you say is the biggest argument against ranked choice voting? So the biggest argument against ranked choice voting is that it doesn't select candidates that support the preferences of the electorate as a whole as often as we would like for an electoral system. So when we look at the Alaska special election, Here's a wonderful example that demonstrates how ranked choice voting doesn't lead to the election of majority winners. Alaska's special election in 2022 was the state's first race decided under ranked choice voting. It led to an upset with a Democrat winning the state's single seat in the House of Representatives. Republicans won way more votes in the original count, about 60 percent to the Democrats' 40 percent. But the Republican votes were split between two candidates and neither had more than 50 percent. So ranked choice voting kicked in. Republican Nick Begich was knocked out. And in round two, Democrat Mary Peltola beat Republican Sarah Palin. Adding to the controversy, the voting shows that Begich, the eliminated Republican, would have won head to head against Peltola and against Palin. Right, so Nick Begich did have a majority of support against Mary Peltola and against Sarah Palin. And because of the algorithm, because of the way that ranked choice voting systems compute who wins the election, 
Um, he was eliminated in the first round, and one of the two candidates who did not have majority support ended up winning. This is indicative of sort of the fatal flaw of using an instant runoff system, which we call ranked choice voting here in the United States. Also under ranked choice voting, the first place winner in the initial vote may go on to lose the election. In Oakland, California in 2010, Democrat Don Parada won the first place vote for mayor with 30% more votes than fellow Democrat Jean Kwan, but under ranked choice voting, Kwan eventually won. And a similar flip happened in Maine in 2018. Congressman Bruce Poliquin, a Republican, won more first place votes, but ultimately lost to Democrat Jared Golden. Whether outcomes like that are good for the election system depends on who you ask. 31 states in Washington, D.C. are considering bills or ballot measures to install ranked choice voting. Five states, all controlled by Republicans, recently banned ranked choice voting. Support for ranked choice voting doesn't fall strictly along political lines, but we did find ranked choice voting efforts are more likely to be funded by liberal and progressive mega donors. Big donors to Fair Vote include the liberal Hewlett and John and Laura Arnold Foundations, as well as the liberal activist billionaire George Soros through his Open Society Foundations. What's behind the big money push by these big money foundations and political, politically toned billionaires, for example? What's their interest in it? Uh, most of Fair Vote's funding comes from individual donations, but we do get a number of larger donations from foundations. And I think these foundations uh, tend to invest in a number of uh, good elections or, or uh, pro-democracy type reforms, and they're looking for more stability in our politics, I think. And I think some upgrades to our elections help us inject more stability into our political system and make it easier to make progress on every other issue. There's little doubt that ranked choice voting means candidates have to campaign for second place votes and might be less likely to sling mud, more likely to try to please a wider variety of voters. But the Conservative Heritage Foundation says ranked choice voting manufactures a faux majority for the winner and is a scheme to disconnect elections from issues and allow candidates with marginal support from voters to win. The Conservative Honest Elections Project says ranked choice voting is a way to ensure left-leaning politicians get elected. A final controversy comes because when voters choose only a first-place candidate, as nearly one in three decide to do under ranked choice voting, their vote may not ultimately count at all in the final results. One thing is for sure, you can expect to hear a lot more about all of this. Not only are Biden and Trump on the November ballot, but ranked choice voting will be voted on in more states than ever before. What would you say to the idea that these new ideas maybe not so new, but the ideas to change things are coming from people who just aren't happy because the candidate they like didn't win. I think that's a, a really valid concern that we hear from folks. Uh, however, if we look at the non-majority outcomes we see right now, I think this was not what the founders intended. Uh, this, we were intended to have an informed electorate making decisions based on majority rule. And a system like ranked choice voting gets us a lot closer to that intention than what we're doing now. The problem with ranked choice voting is that you don't end up electing the candidate whose preferences are aligned with the median. It has this extremist bias. It has a tendency towards electing candidates who are further to the left or further to the right. There's talk in Illinois of using ranked choice voting in the 2028 presidential primaries as well as proposals to drop out of an experiment early in Utah and ban the system entirely in Idaho.